Hi guys and welcome, my name is Jude and today I am here to do a review for Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. Let me just start off by saying that this has to be by far the most badass book that I've ever read and also my favorite book of 2017. I must add that when I say badass, I don't mean it in a stereotypical way of, you know, like an action-packed book or a superhuman-like character. I mean it in the sense of an incredibly strong and admirable protagonist, Wen Proctor. Still House Lake is the story of a woman called Gina Royal who is what was a typical housewife in the suburbs with two kids and a perfect family until she finds out that her husband is a serial killer and then he goes to jail and then then well yeah. Yeah. She reinvents herself and works on a new identity for her and her kids and now she's Wynne Proctor and she's on the run for a couple of years now and finally she decides to settle down on Still House Lake. But then a body turns up near the lake she lives in and the body is murdered very 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 similarly to how her husband used to do things and her husband is still in jail. So like what happened? Murders are happening like they used to and it's like who did it? Was it her? Was it someone else? Was it her husband? And who knows? Now plot wise the story is eerie enough to keep you on your toes throughout the novel surprisingly enough I mean throughout the end you kind of figure how things are going to happen but still you know you're it's it's exciting it's such an exciting book but what made this so so great was when Proctor the main protagonist was just flawlessly amazing and badass and it's she has to be my favorite character of ever so far seeing her transition from Gina Royal to when Proctor was insane. I mean, it only goes through a few chapters and few glimpses here and there of how she used to be and who she is now, but still it's very clear to see the change that happened. When you see glimpses of Gina Royal, you don't like her. I didn't like her. I thought she was so weak and so naive at everything that she thought and, and just so small-minded. The fascinating thing is that now her, in her present life, also hated how she used to be and just doesn't like it because she thought of herself as weak and it's now in a different mindset where she had to grow, where she had to mature at the extent of so much pain and so much hurt that it's just she doesn't recognize herself as how she was before. And you can see that and it's incredible. What I think is also so, so, so admirable on behalf of the author, Rachel Kane, is that even though she grew um, and she changed a lot and Gina and Wen are stark contrasts to each other, she didn't do it lazily. It isn't like she made Gina to be a polar opposite of Wen just randomly. No, you can actually see Gina in Wen. You can see how she just developed and how she grew. You can't see similarities at first and they do seem unrecognizable from each other but when you peel back layers you find that Gina is still in Wen because they're one and the same. They just grew up a lot. They, they, had, they had to. They had to become survivors. They had to become strong. They had to become independent. They had to thrive in just such a hostile situation to survive and to make things as safe as they could for their kids. Both Gina and Wen, which are the same. I'm, I'm talking about them both, but it's like they're the same. Yeah. And I hadn't seen that before. I hadn't ever seen an author just know their characters so, so well that they carry, carry them well throughout um, a novel. I've seen that in series, though. Yeah, like in series, I've seen how the characters evolve and grow in a period of time. But here, just through glimpses, just through flashbacks, just through comments in her head here and there, you get all that backstory. And to me, that's just... I was in awe at the fact that Wen Proctor has to be the character that I've most been able to relate to. Not because we have anything in common, but just because of pure empathy that was worked into the character from the author, and that's amazing. I have zero in common with Wen Proctor. I've never been in a situation like her. I've never been attacked by internet trolls or or threads or had a psycho husband. I've never had two kids. I've never, I don't like children. I don't care about children. I don't want children. Yet it was just amazing to see how she cared for them. And I was worried about the goddamn kids. Like I was worried. So to relate to a character that I have nothing in common nor want anything to have in common with them was just amazing. Amazing. And I do honestly feel that what made this book so great and what makes it have like a 4.5 rating average on Goodreads is when Proctor. Um, I do think that the other characters were amazing. No matter how small each character comes into play throughout the story, they're all just so greatly thought, thought out. 
so greatly worked. They all seem very interesting. They all seem layered. Even if you just see a glimpse of them, you can see that they're worked upon. So it makes for an amazing, believable setting. The kids were great. I mean, they were a pain in the ass most of the time because they were so resentful toward, towards Wen. Wen made so many mistakes. She was overprotective, overbearing, and just like, crazy at times. But still, you feel for them and you, and you feel sad for them. You feel the hurt, the pain that goes behind every single action that they take and that's that's I like I liked it I like it a lot again back to the plot as I said it's mysterious enough to keep you on your toes and just exciting it's, it's an exciting plot and it's also very creepy because when when it comes to the details of the murders and everything that happened the author gives you just enough for you to know that what happened was terrible but she holds back on the details to just let your mind run wild and I think I think that's even more scary because the facts are horrifying it's horrible what happened but the lack of detail it's just even more so when you just run with it and you're like damn damn because the author leaves no room for questioning on whether or not terrible things happen like that's that's a fact just how terrible it's up to you and my mind just went on full gore so um yeah as for the ending I was so 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 scared that it was gonna end in a cliffhanger and it didn't and I'm so thankful for that the chapter is closed um I mean there's so much more left open and it, I, I'm dying to get my hands on the second book but overall like this is closed like this is done which I was so worried it wouldn't happen because as, as I was advancing on the book I was like oh my god there's like this left and none I, I, I don't have the answers yet but it is given to you so that was like you yeah. and I am just so excited for the second book and just to know a lot more about Melvin Royal Melvin Royal being this killer serial killer ex-husband who comes all into play the, the way he plays throughout this novel was very interesting but I'm just hoping to see more of him in the second book because he was so fascinating in a very terrifying way of course um, but I just I hope the author dives into his mind a lot more because even though he did terrible things and it seems like inhuman she does explore the dark side of him like you can see it lying there and I, I, I'd love to see more of that in the second book I'd love to give it five out of five stars on Goodreads it was an unbelievably feminist novel like and I don't mean feminist but with a hidden agenda of any type of thing I just mean it in, a, in the sense of a strong badass female leading character i would love to see this as a movie it would be great or as a series god damn a series a netflix series it would be great so if you like mystery thrillers and just badass women then style Lake is a pick for you and i i recommend this for everyone every single one of you Every single one of you out there watching reader. It's a mystery thriller that did not rely on twists and turns in order to be interesting. It relied on the cast, per se, the cast of characters that was there, and that just made for such an amazing story that built up the plot to be a amazing. So yes. <laughs> read it so bad like you gotta read it you gotta read it you gotta read it you gotta read it I gotta read the second one I gotta read it I gotta get it I gotta buy it I'm gonna buy it the next time I go to the bookstore because I, I can't wait I can't wait and well yeah those are my thoughts loved it loved it recommended it. read it five stars of course I gave it five stars Blah. I've also made a written review for this book which has I mean it's the same thoughts but I think they're a lot more structured because I sat down and I wrote them down um, and I, I spell checked like I can't spell check or like what I filtered my thoughts yeah that's what I'm trying to say because right here I'm just like blah, 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 I loved it oh my god five stars great oh. but written it just makes a lot more sense I mean it's the same sentiments same thoughts but it you know if you want to read it go ahead it will be linked down below and yeah let me just thank you so so much for watching do let me know in the comment section if you read it if you haven't read it why haven't you read it yet if you liked it if you didn't like it why didn't you like it oh my god if you were a fan of Gina Royal and you like want a poster of her and you want a Netflix series along with me then just give me a high five yeah and I will see you guys in the next video bye let me know if you have any recommendations though more mystery thrillers around the lines of still house lake because I'm just I'm thirsty for that. I'm so thirsty for that um, Yes, okay. Bye